So according to the latest DJ Mag poll of venues, High Nightclub in Ibiza has been crowned as the number one nightclub anywhere in the world for 2022. And having visited this venue fairly recently, I thought I would make a little bit of a review for you, covering off what you will expect if you wanted to go and visit, what kind of prices you'll be expected to pay if you go, as well as talking about some of the history of the venue and also my own thoughts on if I feel that this venue is worthy of that number one position. So a little bit different to some other stuff that I've put on this channel, so let's get straight into it. So this five and a half thousand capacity venue sits in Playa Den Bossa in Ibiza, just across the road from Ushuaia, which is an open air venue. In terms of the venue itself, it's actually fairly new as a club. It opened back in 2017. And of course, at the time of filming this video, you have to take into account that Clubs have been shut for like two years due to the global pandemic. So it actually hasn't been operating for that many years at all compared to a lot of other nightclubs on the island of Ibiza and also as well other clubs within the top 100 countdown. They've been operating for far, far longer than High. Now when High opened back in 2017, it was actually pretty controversial. And the reason for this is because the building within which it operates was formerly operating as a world-class nightclub known as Space. Now, this nightclub had a rich history dating back to 1989, and it frequented the DJ Mag Top 100 chart as the best nightclub in the world, and it attracted for many, many years world-class DJs to play. David Guetta played there in the 90s, Carl Cox was one of the uh, longest standing residents, as well as other parties such as Elro. Sundays at Space were always famous. Richie Horton had a night there if you liked underground music. And I feel like the magic of Space was that it just brought together people from all walks of life just to enjoy music and have a dance and let your hair down. It was quite a no frills venue really. Um, don't get me wrong, it had state of the art sound, it had state of the art lighting, but you know, it was like just a warehouse party and some amazing nights were held there over the many years. Now the reason why people were a bit nervous when High opened its doors is because it's owned and operated by the same people that own the nightclub across the road, which is Ushuaia. This open air nightclub is a little bit different to what Space used to be in that it caters to a more VIP market. Now don't get me wrong, you can just buy a ticket and go and dance in a Ushuaia, but it has a large VIP area, something that Space really didn't pay that much attention to. You know, a Ushuaia was all about allowing people to go clubbing in different formats. So if you wanted to just to dance, you could do that, but it also allowed people, if you wanted to buy your big fancy bottle of champagne or vodka or whatever you're buying, then it allowed you to do that. And people were just a bit nervous that High would become this VIP centered club, a little bit like what you get in Las Vegas with booths everywhere and not much dance floor space. And yes, High does feel way more premium than Space did, but I actually feel like they've struck the balance quite well. Which leads us quite nicely into the next part of the video in terms of what to expect if you are visiting High for a night out. In terms of entry prices, you're looking anywhere in between the region of 50 to 90 euros for an entry ticket. That is not VIP, that is just standalone entry. And then when you walk in, straight in front of you, you have the main room, which is also known as the theatre. This is by far the the largest room of the whole venue and it is impressive to say the least. At the back part of the room you have four bars and also the booth where the lighting technician sits. In terms of drink prices you are going to be paying a premium but this is the same across most nightclubs in Ibiza. So a bottle of water will set you back 12 euros, a soft drink or a beer around 15 euros and a spirit and a mixer will set you back about 22 euros more if you have energy drink as your mixer. I will say though for that money, I mean to be honest you would expect it, you do get 
a premium spirit. It's not cheap vodka or cheap whiskey, for example. And also as well, um, your mixer comes out of a bottle. It's not out of a, a gun, so it's not like post mix or anything like that, which is good to see. One thing I did notice with High and also other venues within Ibiza is they have started to measure the amount of alcohol that they're putting in drinks. Um, it is a double measure, a standard, but it's not quite the measure you used to get in the olden days where they used to just free pour spirits into your uh, glass. So do bear that in mind, it is tightly controlled. Now the main room is extremely impressive. There's a large dance floor for everyone to dance on. And yes, there are VIP booths in here. However, they are on like tiered staircases going up either side. So they are like out of the way. They don't actually get in the way of, of the main dance floor too much. And they don't intrude too much, which is actually a nice touch. And at the far end, you've got a huge video wall and the stage, which is where the DJ performs. Now, in terms of the lighting uh, and the sound here, it is second to none. It is a um, an L Acoustics line array system in here, which packs an absolute punch. You can really feel the sound as well as hear uh, the clarity of all of the music that's being played, which is incredible. And there is a lighting everywhere. And one thing that I really noticed in high is how spotless the venue is. It has got a premium feel to it. Like it smells nice. I know that sounds a bit weird, but they must have some kind of scent machine in there because it just smells fresh at all times, um, you know, compared to other clubs that I've been to. And honestly, the venue is looked after. Like you could eat your dinner off the dance floor, it is that clean. Anyways, moving on then, if you go out to the left-hand side, you've got more bars. It's an outdoor area, so there's a smoking area. And if you carry on down that uh, left-hand smoking area, you can actually uh, get in at the front of the dance floor if you want more of a stage view. Off to the right then, you've actually got a little foyer area, which um, is the first set of toilets. So you kind of go out of the main room to the right and then to the left. All the toilets in high are uh, gender neutral. They're all cubicles and they're all kept immaculately clean. Um, the toilets on the left hand side actually have a DJ booth in, which is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and some of the best parties and some of the best sets that I've seen have been in those toilets, which is it's just a surreal thing to have. And the whole ceiling lights up, which is really quite cool. Um, if you go um, out of the main room and take a right, then you will be greeted with the second room, which is also known as the club room. Again, it's a bit smaller. It has quite big VIP kind of areas here um, in, in raised areas, but it's got ample dance floor space. And this is the more underground room. Now, in comparison to space, they have kind of flip this room 90 degrees. So the DJ booth is in a completely different location to what it was when it was space. And there are far more VIP areas in this room compared to what it used to be. However, it is a good room still and it plays um, home to a lot more sort of underground music. And again, the lighting is pretty spectacular in this room. And then finally, if you go out towards the um, second outdoor area, which is out the back of this particular club room, so it's kind of to the far right of the venue, as it were, you have got more uh, toilets, but they don't have a DJ in, um, in this area of the club. Also, um, you've got what's called the secret garden area, which has got little teepees or, or wigwams, which you can go and sit in, which is quite nice. They've got some seats out there so you can chill uh, whilst um, having a drink with friends or it is a smoking area as well. Now, in terms of the roof terrace, um, this is kind of been minimized. So space was quite famous for having an outdoor roof terrace at the front of the venue, which was also a smoking area. That smoking area to the right and the left didn't exist when it was space. Um, it, you know, all of the smoking area was on the roof. There is a bar on the roof now, but there's not a lot up there unless you are VIP. So it's kind of like the upper levels of the main room, which is VIP now. Also to note as well, in the main room to the left-hand side, that outdoor area that I mentioned, that used to be another room of space. That used to be known as the terrace. Unfortunately, that room no longer exists. So if you have visited space before, High is a completely different venue. However, 
somewhat similar in some respects as well. There are some similarities in terms of the room layout, in terms of the club room and the main room anyways. So that is high as a venue, but does it deserve the number one spot of all nightclubs in the entire world? Now the caveat to this is, it's my opinion, and I have not visited all 100 top nightclubs in the world. In fact, if you've done that, that's pretty impressive. Do comment down below, I would be intrigued to know. And my thoughts are, yes, it does. And the reason for this is because, number one, as a clubber, I have not experienced anything like this. First and foremost, the programming of the, the club across the week is so musically diverse. If you like electronic music, there is going to be a night for you. David Guetta has a residency there, Fisher has a residency there, the Martinez Brothers, uh, Glitterbox, which is Disco House, Black Coffee, you know, there's EDM, there's Tech House, there's Normal House, there's Disco House, there's more Melodic House. There are so many nights there that really suit all musical tastes. You will find a night that is going to be suitable for you. Secondly, the sound and the lighting in that club, regardless of what room you're in, is second to none. It is a really 360 degree immersive experience from start to finish. And not only that, it's a pleasant environment to be in. The club is kept spotless. It's so clean. It's probably the cleanest club that I have ever set foot in of all the nightclubs that I visited and I visited a fair few in my time. Hope you've enjoyed this video, something a little bit different on the channel as I've not really done a club review before. If you want me to do more of these, then let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe by hitting the button down there if you haven't done so already. And also check out my last video, which is up there. And I will see you in the next one.